Off the chips. Psycho. <laughs> Hello, my octorinos, my uh, octologists, my octa friends. Uh, sorry, this video has been such a long time in coming. I had planned to do something different uh, with the next video. I was going to look at um, uh, live sampling. Uh, sadly, the guy I work with uh, has had to get out of town for a while, um, but he should be back at some point and, and then I'll be able to make that video. What I'd like to look at today, quite quickly, it's going to be a short video, is just resampling. I don't know if you resample. Um, it's actually fairly easy once you get used to it. Uh, there's quite a few clever things you can do with it. Uh, it's a lot of fun uh, and it's very useful in a live performance situation. Uh, what I've got set up here is I have, uh, on this track I have a, uh, a beat loop playing. On this track we have uh, just a, a little melody sample. Um, and then on this track we have a kind of synth sound. And on this we have, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but it's a very low sub bass. It's like a 808 that I've tuned. Um, okay, uh, and then on this track here we have a, where are we, vocal sample, on, everyone, let's... Uh, which I pinched, um, and on this track here we have, uh, this is my resampling track. So basically, uh, in order to resample you need to set up the crossfader in a particular, you need to set up a scene in a particular way on the crossfader. Um, what we've got go going on here is basically this scene here when we're on scene A. Uh, what this is doing is this is allowing all of these four tracks here plus this one here, the volume, uh, the X level is uh, set to max on these and this one. Oh, actually I forgot to set it on that one but it doesn't really make any difference. Um, and then on these uh, it's set to minimum uh, and uh, and then when we go to this one you can see that the X level here is uh, just coming through normally but on this scene it's it's set to minimum so basically this is allowing us to fade these tracks in and out using the crossfader <clears throat> now on this track we have ourselves if, we, if I just bring up here we have some playback tricks uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you is basically how to use uh, the recorder on this track, which is what this is set to play, this is set to play the track recorder on recorder 5, you can see that track 5 recording, um, as a kind of buffer, uh, what we've got going on here is some, some basically we're re-triggering everything that the aux track is playing, and the way that we're doing that is with a recording trick, this recording trick here. Now, the important thing to remember is how this is set up. Well, the way I like to do it um, is, as you can see, if I go into uh, the function of this, this uh, recording here, um, what I've got is I've got in A and B and in C and D set to off, uh, and then I have Q. Uh, I'm recording the Q output of the uh, uh, aux track. Um, and what this is doing then is if we go if we look at these tracks, we can see that I've set up in um, uh, the uh, settings here. Uh, where are we? Is it in audio? Yeah, here we go. Q config is set to studio, not normal. What that means is is that the Q goes to both the or the, the track goes to the, both the uh, normal um, sorry the normal outputs the main outs. Is also sent to the queue outs. The queue outs have nothing connected here, but what that's doing is it means that I can control the level at which in each individual track is sent to the resampler by hitting function. <coughs> uh, sorry, by hitting Q uh, and then using the level control to adjust the Q levels. Sorry if this all sounds a bit confusing so far. Um, what this means then, if I go back to uh, my track here with uh, my recording trig, okay, uh, is that every time that this reaches this trigger here, it resamples the entire output of the uh, aux track. So, <clears throat> what that means is I can then play with the position of this cue, um, this sorry, this trig uh, by by shifting it up. Um, this pattern is set to be only 11 steps long because I, I like to use offset patterns um, to give a bit more variety um, when I do crossfading and stuff. 
So basically what it sounds like is this. If I just start the uh, tracks, you'll just hear the normal thing playing first. Now, when I go over and switch the crossfader, it will play the resampled output. Now, bear in mind, this isn't a one-shot trig, so it's constantly resampling. And we can see that if we go into the edit here. You can see that it's constantly recording uh, what's coming out of the Octatrack. Okay, so that's quite good fun. Um, and what you can do there in order to give yourself variations, and you can do this manually like I just did, is you can shift the trigs around, and that will alter when the uh, sample is re-triggered when you have the crossfader over, or uh, you can go here and you can shift this around. You could, you could put it like right up here, which means it will start sampling from a different place and will give you a variation. So you can do that manually, or you could have that you know, set up differently per pattern. So that's all good. Um, however, it might be a bit random for some people and some people might want to do something different with it. So one of the other great things you can do is to combine this with uh, one shot tricks, which I believe I covered in the, my first tips video. Um, if we then go back into uh, the trick edit menu. Um, now, I'm gonna get rid of this trick here. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna place some one shot tricks. Now the way you do that is you just place your regular tricks here like this. Actually, let's shift those along. Um, put one there as well. Then you hold down function and you turn those into one-shot tricks and you'll see them flashing to show that they are uh, ready to be triggered, but they won't be triggered. Um, <clears throat> so if we then go uh, back to, sorry. <laughs> What we just have here is what was just sampled into the buffer last time. If I go on to track five here, um, and you need to make sure that you hold down the track button and you hit yes, that will trigger the next trig. So you can do this, I put uh, I think like six trigs uh, in this pattern, one shot trigs. So you can vary manually when you will resample the loop. And of course, uh, I do have on uh, this uh, this track here, I have some effects. I have a filter with an envelope and um, I have, uh, what have I got here? It's one of the new, hmm? What is this? What is this? Oh, it's a comb filter, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, they just threw me there for a second. What have I done there? Okay, so, um, and also on these tracks here, I've set this scene up as well as, um, I think it's on this one actually, as, as well as uh, fading the tracks in and out, I also have um, some uh, pitch effects going on um, and some uh, uh, dark reverb effects. 
uh, re-triggering and start position shifting. So I can actually use the crossfader to kind of whip in stuff, um, which will shift the vocal sample around a bit and, and do stuff to it. Um, but which will also go into the recording buffer. So you can you can kind of whip stuff in really quickly, alter things, and then bring them across. And it takes a bit of getting used to, um, but you can actually alter parameters in any of these tracks, which then get sent to the recording buffer, which is quite handy. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed that tips video. Uh, I will be uploading another one soon, hopefully with some live sampling. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.